ABC 10 News at 7 starts now. New information tonight in the case of missing Chula Vista mom, Maya Miliete. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Court documents are revealing some of what life was like before she disappeared. Our ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty shows what we're learning from the family dispute that is now in the public eye. In this nine page document, Larry Miliete, husband of missing mother Maya Miliete, argues why his wife's family should not have weekly visitation with the couple's three children. Maya Miliete was last seen in the couple's Chula Vista home on January 7th. Maya's parents are asking the court to see the children every other weekend and virtual visits once a week. They say they've had continuing contact with them since they were born up until their mother's disappearance when Larry cut off all communication. In the filing, Larry says his wife has mental stress and health issues, that family gatherings contributed to Maya's depression. He says Maya's parents live in Moreno Valley and would go almost a year without seeing them. All arguments Maya's family adamantly denies. Miliete says his parents have taken residency with me indefinitely to help raise my children. He says he was open to visitation one to two hours on a weekend in his home, saying my children are not bonded with the maternal side at all. Miliete says his children are already going through a rough patch. He goes on to say his children are very healthy, safe, loved, and are all very well taken care of. They continue to excel in school. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. Both Miliete and Maya's parents will be in court next week to let a judge hash out visitation. Chula Vista police have named Miliete as a person of interest in Maya's disappearance, but he denies any involvement and claims Maya left the family. The Navy helicopter that crashed off San Diego hit the carrier deck of the USS Abraham Lincoln. Last week's crash killed five sailors and injured five more. And today, a Defense Department website updated information that says the helicopter was touching down on the aircraft carrier when it experienced side-to-side -side vibrations. That caused the main rotor to strike the flight deck and fall over the side. One person was rescued from the ocean. Yet another shooting near Belmont Park in Mission Beach. An innocent bystander in her 60s is expected to be okay after being shot in a parking lot. Our ABC tennis reporter Mimi Alcala spoke to another woman who barely missed those bullets. Mimi. Hi, Steve. Yeah, that woman says she was in a truck in this large parking lot here at Mission Beach near Belmont Park when those bullets just started flying last night. A frightening night for merchandise vendors at Mission Beach watching a friend affectionately known as Mama Bear get caught in the crossfire of a shooting. She's just motherly to everyone. She's just a beautiful lady. She's always, you know, God bless you and always wishing people well. Kelly Sexton and her husband are also vendors at Mission Beach selling handmade jewelry. Monday night, they just finished up working and were laying in the back of their camper watching a movie when the gunfire erupted. All of a sudden, we were just startled by just pow, 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 pow. We knew that it wasn't fireworks. She says two bullets hit her windshield. One of them even blew out the driver's side window. If I was sitting in the driver's seat, this shot would have been a headshot. The friend she calls Mama Bear was packing up her vehicle near Kelly's when she was shot in the upper back. Police say a group of four men got into an argument just east of the restrooms. One started shooting at another, running away in the parking lot when the woman was hit. It's the third shooting in this general area this summer. A couple of weeks ago, another innocent bystander, Tim Gauthier, was getting off work when he was shot in the knee near Belmont Park. So thankful that she's going to be okay. Over Labor Day weekend, San Diego police had their command center set up in the South parking lot at Mission Beach. There was a large police presence throughout the weekend, but Kelly says they left not too long before those gunshots erupted Monday night. Experiencing this shooting so close to home has been terrifying for Kelly. She says something needs to be done to address the recent violence. We need to come together as a community. The police have a presence. I don't know what the answers are, but I'm sure willing to be a part of the solution. And the victim was hospitalized last night, but is expected to be okay. We're told she typically sets up right here where you're looking live now with her daughter. As for the suspects, they have not been caught. Police did give a very vague description, but said they might have more information to release tomorrow. If we get any updates, of course, we will bring those to you. For now, we're live from Mission Beach. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. I'm grateful she will survive. Thank you, Mimi. Turning to coronavirus and some encouraging numbers, the county reported 519 new cases today. That's the lowest we've seen in a while, and there were also no new reported deaths. 
Despite that good news, one of the region's largest health care providers set a single day COVID death record over the weekend. Scripps Health reported six deaths last Saturday and 21 from last Thursday through this morning. As of today, the Scripps system has 162 hospitalized COVID patients with 51 in the ICU. As of this morning, we only have seven staffed intensive care unit beds. So you forget COVID for a minute. If you're in a car accident or if you have a heart attack, we have seven beds that are staffed in the intensive care unit right now. So that's not a lot of beds and it's not just Scripps. I, it's across the system. Scripps officials say 92% of its COVID patients are unvaccinated. You can stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. Happening now, Poway City leaders are discussing a proposed water rate hike. The city wants to increase rates to pay for overhauling its water system. Right now, Poway gets its water from a treatment plant that got contaminated in 2019, forcing residents there to boil their water for several days. Well, now Poway wants to add a second tank to that plant and have the ability to import water if needed. A decision will not be made tonight. The brush fire in the far north county is now 75% contained. The Aruba fire is holding at 54 acres. It broke out Sunday afternoon in the Rainbow area. All evacuations have been lifted. And crews are also making progress battling the Caldor fire near Lake Tahoe. It's now nearly 50% contained. Some evacuation orders are being pulled back. So far, the fire has burned 216,000 acres and destroyed nearly 1,000 structures. Uh, a man who intentionally hit an Oceanside motorcycle officer with his car will spend a long time behind bars. Today, a judge sentenced Roberto Flores to 28 years to life in prison. In 2017, Flores purposely veered into an officer, Brad Hunter, who had pulled over another driver near Oceanside Boulevard. Hunter suffered severe head and leg injuries but survived. Flores was convicted for the second time last month after his initial conviction was overturned because his attorney didn't represent him properly. At a bizarre incident on the 15 in Mission Valley, a man says another vehicle's drive shaft came flying through his windshield overnight and hit him in the face. Incredibly, he was able to keep driving to a nearby fire station to get help. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. No word on what caused the object to hit his car or what other vehicle it may have come from. A local Marine veteran and musician is speaking out after a horrific accident with his band's tour bus. As ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen tells us, the accident left him with life-altering injuries and an uncertain future. After serving the Marines for a decade, most of it based at Camp Pendleton, Travis Wheeler set about pursuing his dream of becoming a professional musician. His big break came in March. Incredibly exciting. It was the biggest, biggest band I've ever been in. When he landed a gig playing bass for the rock band Sleep Signals ahead of their national tour. A few weeks ago, on a Wednesday morning, their touring trailer arrived in St. Joseph, Missouri for their 10th stop. Inside, seven people, including Wheeler, who was asleep. I was in the air because we were flipping. Authorities say a semi rear-ended them on a highway. There was a second impact of me landing where I landed in the window of the of the RV. And then that's when my, my feet were pinned up underneath the outside of the window. Six members of his band suffered minor to moderate injuries. Wheeler's injuries were the most severe. Doctors had to amputate part of his right foot and three toes in his left foot. Also a myriad of broken bones. These two bones are broken. My wrist is broken. Including grisly fractures in his right hand. Last week, We're not quitting. We're going to push forward. Wheeler became emotional during a Facebook post. He shared with us why those emotions remain raw. It's not what was supposed to happen. I'm supposed to be, you know, having my big break right now. Um, and not just me, our band. But a determined Wheeler is already eyeing a comeback. Physical therapy. Kind of do this much so far is incredible is going well just because i lost pieces of me i'm going to keep going michael chen abc 10 news wheeler will likely be in the hospital for another week before he heads back to the san diego area a trip to the beach or a bar in pacific beach could soon be more expensive a new ordinance passed by the city council will allow pb to install parking meters with two hour time limits those early plans show that they could go on garnett hornblin bayard and cass the goal is to prevent people from leaving their cars in one place all day long. 
Um, on busy days, you'll end up parking three or four miles back, like 4th of July. Um, absolutely no parking. No decision yet on when the meters will be installed or how much that parking will cost.